Hey guys, this is Pete with Crunch Time Coaching and welcome back to number four, video number four in our free training series, Consistency Stop Missing for No Reason at All. And I do believe that if you agree with me on one simple principle about tennis, that this video is going to be the most important video for you to watch from beginning to end. And here it is. If the ball is not in, you can't win. Now, if you agree with me on that, I think I'm going to really love today's video. Why? Because number one, we're going to be revealing all 17 consistency leaks and how you can fix them systematically in the next 30 days. And number two, this is just not going to be your average run-of-the-mill sales video. I'm actually going to be doing a lot of teaching in this video, uh, concepts that I find very interesting, three principles that I think uh, you will really enjoy and certainly identify with. I think all tennis players, myself included, really identify with these three principles we're about to go over. Now, the first one has to do with average rally length. Principle number one has to do with average rally length. There's all these cool stats coming out on the Pro Tour nowadays, but average rally length really interests me. And we're going to take a look at what's going on at the high pro level versus us on our courts doing battle every day. We're going to take a look at what the key difference is there. Number two is this idea I think that there is this dreaded pusher that we absolutely, absolutely loathe living inside each and every one of us. And it has to come down with just basic human nature, uh, especially I find our online students, the, the idea of being this perfectionist versus our competitive nature and how it can really bring out the ugly and the dark side in us, in our tennis and in our personality. And we're going to go over that. And number three, is how can we start to avoid this vicious cycle of practicing one way where we're going out there practicing and generally feel okay about it and then playing another way where we're like, I'm not cool with this. I'm not really enjoying my matches when I go out there because I'm playing nothing like I practice and how can we get out of this vicious cycle? So I think those are pretty interesting topics. Let's get right into it. Let's talk about principle number one. And that is average rally length. Now, when you look at the the, um, the technology that's come along with tennis, there's all these cool stats. And one that's really grabbed my attention over the last couple of years is this idea of the average rally length on the Pro Tour is four balls. That's right, only four balls back and forth. And on the surface level, you're like, well, that's not very impressive, and I can keep four balls in. But what's going on is at the Pro level is these these ladies and these guys, they are assassins. They're offensive assassins. So... You know, even though it doesn't sound impressive, what's happening is that they're hitting these bomb serves, 120 to 140 serves. They've got these amazing offensive, you know, forehands. So it's like, you know, trying to hold on to a bucking Bronco because they're just so good at offense. So the point quickly breaks down and, and the, usually the server can win between 60 to 80 percent of their first serve points. So that's what's happening on the pro level. Now, that's not what's happening at our level. In fact, coaching for so many years, what I see is that we're giving ourselves within the first three balls, the average length, rally length on the recreational courts is three or less balls. And what's happening there is we are giving ourselves self-inflicted wounds. In, in fact, the biggest thing that I know is the biggest difference is when the pros are setting up their points, they set them up very well. And usually the person who does the best job setting up the point is going to win. On the recreational courts, it can be pretty frustrating because the person who is doing the best job at setting up the point, lots of times is the one who is losing and missing. And this is just not even my, my opinion either. I, I got this long email from a guy who's explained the same exact scenario to where he's frustrated that he's setting up points and he's losing them and he's missing for no reason at all. And that's what set off a light bulb in my head. I'm like, well, that just basically comes down to consistency. And I really don't see many courses out there that deal solely with consistency. There's plenty of courses out there on power and how you can add 10 to 20 miles an hour to your, to your stroke. And we've certainly done that as well. And, and they're good. But what if you're only getting that ball in play 20 to 30 percent of the time after you've added your power? Is that really helping you win matches? So we created this survey and we asked you guys out there about the concept of consistency and you know, surveys, in my mind, they're not uh, very, you don't have much inspiration to fill them out unless you're really driven and motivated to, to do something that interests you. And we, we had all these surveys, hundreds of surveys pour in with your answers, very detailed answers with your frustration about not being consistent. And then 
there was a question that basically was a sliding scale, you know, how do you think it's affecting your ability to win matches, you know, this lack of consistency, and 90% of you said, yes, it's affecting my ability to win. So then I'm like, we have to make this course. And so that just leads right into principle number two, which is that there is this dreaded pusher that we absolutely loathe living inside of us. It, you know, the pusher has kind of been a term that is demonized. No one wants to play or be the pusher uh, because you end up playing a brand of tennis that's really not what you signed up for. You want to go out there, you want to feel good, you want to look good, and you want to hit the ball good. I mean, you want the ball to go in. That's the way you like to play. You don't want to go out there and just pity pat the ball, especially that's not why you're looking online. You're not looking online for lessons so you can figure out how to just tap the ball in. And so it gets really, really frustrating when you go out there and that's what ends up happening in your matches. And it can really bring out the ugly side in you. In fact, um, I was talking to one of our online students who's a really good friend of mine. He's actually a really good player. He's probably one of the better players that we have and he can really hit a big ball. And, and he, he said that, you know, and we're going to keep him nameless and it's not Maddie B. It's another player. And, and uh, he said, yeah, you know, it, it really hit home, this whole concept of consistency and, and, and this whole idea of the treaded pusher, because I went out there and that's exactly what I did. And, and it felt just terrible. It felt like I was in this really bad movie. He, ex he explained like he was in this bad movie that he was starring in and he couldn't get out of it. He couldn't get out of the cycle. And he just started hitting the ball shorter and shorter and weaker and weaker. And then his opponent was just clubbing the ball. And um, he, he compared it to like when a movie goes from bad to worse and usually at the real climax is when you think things can't get any worse and it gets really ugly and dark. The hero swoops in to save the day and he said only in his movie there was no hero coming in. It just got worse. And when he was saying that, then it really hit a chord with me because then I went, if you're a tennis player, you just start picturing yourself out there. And I started to have this feeling of like, yeah, I remember there was some matches out there where I would do that. And, you know, after the match, you have this dark fantasy. Not all fantasies are good of just like, you know, smashing your racket into the ground, walk, doing the walk of shame, hand, handshake up to the, you know, net and shaking your opponent's hand and just taking your racket, chucking it in to the garbage can and just driving off in a blaze of glory, never to see a tennis court again. I mean, I, I think we've all kind of been there in one way or another. Now, that's usually not what we do, right? Because we're adults and and um, and we are also not quitters. Uh, so I think most tennis players are actually pretty strong mentally. And so what we typically do is we look at the bright side. We try and look at the bright side and what did we learn? And then you try and motivate yourself and pump yourself up and you say, tomorrow I'm going to go out there. I'm going to have the best practice ever. You know what? I'm going to use this as a motivator. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to, I'm going to wipe the stench of this match off of my body. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to have a doctor feel good practice, which leads us into principle number three, this idea of not being able to play the way we practice and how this becomes a vicious cycle. And, and this is why I believe is you're always going out there and you're having this doctor feel good practice. You want to feel good about your strokes. You want to build up your confidence. And that's all really good, uh, you know, especially when you just look at it at the surface level. But but what's happening is if you're just going out there and really grooving your strokes and, and trying to get your timing back all the time, it's not really giving you, it's giving you a false sense of confidence and security because then the very next time you go out and play a match and you face pressure, you immediately go into this dreaded pusher mode and, and you're like, here we go again. This is driving me nuts. Like, why am I even playing tennis? You know, how many times, I'm sure you've asked yourself that question before at one time or the other. Why am I doing this? Why am I working so hard? If this is what I'm going to do when I get out there in the court. And my theory is, is that, and this is where I, where I can help you the most is that there's no pressure in your practice. There's no, there's no data that you can really know when you go out and play a match where you can go, I know I can hit the ball this hard consistently under pressure and the ball is going to go in. Okay. Cause if it's not in, you can't win. And so this is where I can help you because we created a 30 day practice system uh, on our consistency where the pressure is cooked into every practice. 
okay? The pressure is cooked in every practice, so you're going to be able to go out there in your matches and play the way you want to play, okay? The, the consistency course is not about teaching you how to just tap the ball in consistently. It's, it's, it's teaching you how to play the way you want to play, where you want to feel good, you want to look good, and you want the shot to be good. So if you like the idea of that, I want to show you how we're going to, you know, build in the, the pressure in every practice, but it's going to be fun. You're going to enjoy it. You're actually going to enjoy it a lot. Last time we did something like this, people really liked the 30-day practice system, which, which also I'm going to show you how you can get that other thing that we did called Solo Shots 100% free today. And if you're one of the first 10 buyers, by the way, I'm also going to show you how it's going to be like buying into an Apple penny stock to where uh, you, you're basically going to be getting on the ground floor and, and, and buying today is going to, uh, one day you're going to have over 20, 30, 40,000 dollars worth of courses because I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. So let's get on in. Let me show you exactly what's inside. Okay. So we're just going to basically, I'm going to guide you through everything right now. Okay, so let me guide you through this. This is going to be awesome. It's all on this page, by the way. If you want to scroll down, um, I like to kind of watch videos, so that's why I wanted to kind of guide you through this, but it's all on the page. Uh, but it really does do a great job of explaining exactly what we're going to go over. First of all, this is a consistency 30 day structured practice system. So, it, it's just not like, you know, random videos. We're actually going to go through 30 days. Last time we did something like this and organized it, people really loved it. You're going to get an email each and every day letting you know exactly what to work on. Then you go into your course day one. It's, it's really good. <laughs> so, but this is what we're going to cover. We're going to systematically work on eliminating your 17 consistency leaks. And so here are your leaks. First of all, footwork. Big one on the survey. A lot of people said, got to get my footwork done. Strategy leaks, you know, so you got out there in a match and you're just not really playing the, the smart shots, the right shot at the right time. Court position like, uh, court position leaks, you're in the wrong place, wrong time. Mental leaks, right? So we can mentally just kind of like, and focus. And so physical, physical conditioning, we're also going to be, you know, getting in better shape. I think Gain better shape is a big part of becoming mentally tough and becoming consistent that you know you can go the distance every point. Training leaks, the way that your training is not right. We've already kind of gone through that. Racket at awareness leak. I think this is big. Really getting over the next 30 days, getting much better with your racket at awareness. We're going to go through lots of skills and drills, teach you how to do that. Spacing leaks. We saw in, in our video, in our three-part series, that spacing is a big problem. Volley leaks. Why are volley leaks so important to fix? Well, first of all, a lot of you play doubles. So if you get those volleys down and, and at the net, you got to be an assassin. You cannot... When you're at the net, you cannot rally for a long time. You've got to be consistent with your volley, but you've got to learn how to put it away in one or two shots. So it's really important that you get your volley down. This is your finishing shot. This is where you've worked so hard for the point. You've got to put it away. Okay, got to keep moving on because there's so much to go over. Shot selection leaks. So just picking the wrong shot at the wrong time. Uh, top spin forehand leaks. A lot of people want top spin, but they're doing things wrong in their technique. That's not giving them the spin that they need. Same thing on the backhand. Also the slice. If you can develop a really good slice, guys, it's one of the best shots you can do. First of all, you can neutralize the point. If someone hits the ball really hard at you, you can just knife that slice back. It's a great setup ball. It's a great approach shot ball. But unfortunately with the slice, too many people, they go to slice it. What happens? Flutters in the air, nothing on it, no bite, no action. And so we're going to make sure that we eliminate that. Your approach shot leak. Again, this is where so many people get opportunities to match and they're just blowing it. There's no other way to put it. Approach shot leaks, um, serve leaks. Of course, the serve is the most complicated shot in tennis, but it is the most important because that's what starts every point. And it can be also your biggest offensive weapon and overhead leaks. You set up everything. Your overhead should always be your reward. And if you're missing overheads, well, that's just not a very good thing. We don't want that. So uh, those are the leaks we're going to we're gonna work on eliminating. Now, let me show you how we're going to do it. So again, here are the main things we're going to be focusing on. We're going to be focusing on serve consistency. Uh, you got The first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be establishing your balance on your serve. So many people are off balance on the serve, and then we're just going to build and build on that. And remember, we're also going to be practicing with pressure on our serve. Uh, footwork consistencies. Not, not enough people are really working on their footwork. And footwork, it's I call it footwork for a reason. It's not foot speed. And the older you get, right? I'm 45, okay, and we're, none of us are getting any younger. 
but I really think that footwork becomes more and more important to me each and every year. The more I lose steps, the better my footwork has to be. And if my footwork is really good, then I am making up for those poor steps that I am losing every year. Um, serve plus forehand and backhand. This is pretty cool in that we're doing drills. Many people just, when they go out and hit, they just hit. They don't really work on hitting a serve plus your bonus shots uh, so that when you're serving, then you're balanced and you're ready to make some more shots. Slice serve consistency, forehand consistency, backhand consistency, volley consistency, singles strategy consistency because uh, consistency also, you know, comes into besides the technique, the decisions you're making. And I know that we've got a very active list with both singles and doubles. So we're going to be going over both of those so you can start to play more consistently, make better decisions, win points easier. Now, this consistency course, it comes with 22 drills that you and and there's more than 22 videos, but it comes with 22 drills that we're going to systematically go over in the next 30 days. It's got a 30-day practice schedule. Uh, many of the drills you also be repeating because you just don't want to do them once. You want to do them over and over again and get better at them. So the, the types of drills are going to be going over, we're going to be going over rhythm, timing, focus drills. You're going to be going over split step and over the net exercise, forehand spacing drill, service consistency drill, the number one drill in the world for your serve um, to build up your confidence. The serve consistency balance drill, the one hand backhand consistency drill, the forehand consistency drill, backhand slice drill, one hand backhand consistency drill, the cross court forehand drill, multi directional footwork consistency drill, warm up consistency drill. The way you warm up can really, really set the tone for how you're going to play in your match. Mini court point play consistency drills, the Andre Agassi blueprint. This is the way you want to be playing your matches. Uh, picture perfect alley rally baseline point play consistency drill. Remember, we're working, we're cooking in the pressure, guys. Every practice, picture perfect consistency drill. So you really remember how we've talked about racket head and balance and spacing. Really making sure that you can hit and be picture perfect when you're done. This is one of my favorite all time ways to practice to really become when you just look so beautiful. Okay, you're gonna see it. You're gonna love it. Um, Float and fire volley drill. Ah, this is just so good. The, the, oh, we put it. That's a, that's a wrong. That's a typo. We got to fix that. It's the Tootsie Roll Challenge, which is all about um, the next one. These two. I love this. The envelope drill. Okay, I've got to stop here for a second. This was one of the best lessons I've ever, ever heard in my life. I was coaching at East Carolina University. I was the assistant coach. The head coach talked about the idea that everybody's got this envelope, okay, meaning that Everybody's got their magic number to where they just all of a sudden break down. Some people, it's three shots. Some people, it's seven shots. Some, it's 10. Some, it's 20. Some, it's 30. Basically, his point was the further you can push your envelope, you keep working on pushing your envelope further and further down the road, the tougher player you become. You know, if you just, if you just can only go to three, well, then, you know, you're not, you're not very deep. And pushing the envelope and, and you're going to lose a lot of matches. But if you can be that player that consistently makes 10 balls in a row in a point, well, you're going to win a lot more matches. If you can consistently feel confident that if you're on balance and you, you'll make 20 balls or 30 balls, well, then you become a much tougher player. So that's what this is also designed to do is push your envelope each and every day because you're measuring to see how far you can push that envelope. And that drill specifically does that. But in general, we're doing it throughout 30 days. Uh, the best consistency warm-up in the in the world. A lot of these drills are with me and Matty B warming up. I think you'll like that. Uh, every day you'll practice one or more of these drills. Watch these consistency drills to level up. So we've got the Pete bounce hit drill, Pete over the net, the Tootsie Roll drill. Again, a lot of these, um, the Romanian volley drill, the cross-court triangle drill. This, these are some doubles drills. Monkey in the middle drill. I love this monkey in the middle drill. Because then that really helps you avoid that net man plus be consistent. Doubles midcourt volley drills where we're learning how to be a master in the midcourt. So important. Uh, this is really good. <laughs> this is when I when I read it, I'm proud of it. Um, midcourt leg drive volley drill. Moon ball challenge. This is one of the things, the moon ball guys, the moon ball goes up and it just paralyzes people. And they don't know. I think it's one of the shots where people miss so much, or they also give up the short ball. 
your feet become very flat. I'm, t I'm basically teaching you how to read peaks and watch the ball bounce and then get in a position to where you're just not, when that moon ball comes back, you're just not tapping in. You're not giving, you're not making on forced errors. Too many people go with a moon ball. They stand there still and they end up hitting the ball back like that. I'm going to show you how you can really just, you know, come back and really master that. You want to master the moon ball rally with somebody. And, and this is where you can start to turn, you know, a neutral rally or, or defense and the offense really fast once you learn how to do this. Uh, we got to keep going because I don't want this to take too long for you guys. Matri the matrix uh, focus drill, uh, the serve plus three drill, matrix focus drill again, value consistency on the wall. So we're going to teach you how to do the wall, the wall warm up, eyeball exercises. So, so many people have commented and I'm so glad that we have this in the course because one of the biggest things that people are commenting on the, on, on this three-part series that we're going through is that they don't watch the ball. So we're actually going to be doing exercises before you go on the court to really improve your focus uh, with your eyes and and how long you can stay engaged and and really get so much better at watching a tennis ball by doing these eyeball exercises. Pretty neat. I don't think anybody's doing anything like this in, in the online uh, instruction. It's, it's out of the box even for me. So I thought, let's put it in the course. Okay. Become your own tennis doctor. We're also going to be giving you quizzes, especially with, with the serve. You get quizzes every day so you can, um, you know, really answer questions. Become your own tennis doctor. It's, it's another thing to where why do I want people to become their own tennis doctor? Because when you're going out there, you don't want to be playing a match and not know why you missed. And, and what happens too many times when I teach private lessons, I'll ask people why they missed. They don't know and they keep looking for me for answers. So we're going to be going through quizzes to where you're going to know, okay, that ball missed because of that. So every time you go and play a match, this is another part of becoming a more consistent player, not having the wheels fall off, is every time you play a match, you're going to know immediately why you miss. It's not a mystery. It's not because you suck. It's not because you're having a bad day. It's usually because of one tiny mistake you're making. And if you know the answer right away, the next time you see that ball, you're going to correct it. And you're going to become much more consistent and tough player to beat. So we're putting in uh, quizzes, which is really neat. Okay, so we've also included never release bonus tips for you and techniques to fix your consistency. Bonus number one is the volley consistency tip to mass your racket at awareness. I think you're going to really, really enjoy this video. Uh, bonus number two are three types of volleys to master so that when you're going to play a point, you know that there's a structure to every single point as you're coming in and volleying. Number three is the backhand consistency uh, tips with your grips, your preparation, and your swing. Bonus number four is the double-hander backhand leaks video, which we show you how, what are the, all the leaks are going to happen on your double-hand backhand. Bonus number five is how to stay focused each and every point. Bonus number six, if you want to read more on these guys, you can just scroll down the page and, and read it. Uh, numbers, bonus number six is how to dismantle the pusher, right? We want to know how to dismantle the pusher so we don't end up playing exactly like the pusher. And then uh, bonus number seven is doubles strategy, how to defeat poachers and lobbers. Okay, these are, we've, we've taught thousands of players worldwide who testify and love our coaching. They also come out to our courts when we do um, camps, which also we're going to do a consistency camp. So after, if you sign up today and buy, you can learn about a consistency camp. I just want to disclose everything. So there is a consistency camp coming and, and we're offering it only first to people who buy the consistency course. So you have to, to learn about that. You have to sign up. But um, anyway, these are just um, people who really like our coaching, giving us testimonials, which is always cool. Okay. Then finally, to make this a total no-brainer, I'm including solo shots. I'm like, you know what? This whole idea of the 30-day practice schedule, it originated with solo shots. People loved solo shots where each and every day they were given different drills and exercises to do the, so they could systematically go out there and practice and measure it, okay? You want to have it where th this, this basically improves your technique, your tactics, and every practice is measurable. I called it the TTM system. Your technique, your tactics, 
and everything's measurable. So we're teaching you how to practice that way because so many people complain that, hey, no one will practice this stuff with me. So we made a solo shots course where we show you how to practice on your own and we show you how to uh, develop uh, depth and consistency, uh, play winning shots on autopilot, improve your shot selection, create more spin and variety. This is all what's included inside solo shots. It's a 30-day step-by-step video instruction. You get a 45-page drill book, which is really cool, a 30-day printout schedule, daily motivated emails. This is a, just a great bonus. So um, you also get solo shots. I think we're going to release those 30-day emails after you go through the first 30 days of the consistency course but you'll be able to dive into you'll be able to go back and forth between both courses but i do want to make sure that you go through the consistency course first and then you can go through this second uh and you have these two courses it's like all you need ever to go out and practice by yourself and never run out of ideas and feel like okay i'm getting a lot of value of my time on the court when i'm not playing matches I know exactly what to do every day and I'm measuring it and I'm never going to run out of ideas. These two courses will be more than enough to always be able to feel that way. So I think you're going to just love it. And remember, guys, I want you to start finishing strong or your money back. OK, so uh, just just like any course if, that we make, if you're not happy, I'm not happy. So there's 100 percent full money back guarantee. All right, so if you're still watching, first of all, I'm really excited that you're still watching. And um, if you're like me, if I'm still watching a video at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm in. What does this cost me? I want to know what this costs me. So I'm going to do some math for you that I think you're going to be excited about. So let's get into it. So first of all, if you were to go with this program, go through this program with me and spend an hour a day with me on the court one-on-one, -on -one, what would this cost you? Uh, so that would cost you for 30 days – it would cost you $2,400. And then we have the $297 bonus on top of that, which you're getting 100% free today. So that now we are looking at $2,697, which you're like, this is not exciting. This is not exciting math. This is scary math. Plus we've got our bonus of the solo shots for 97, which again, I think is way worth way more than that. But it's, so now we're looking at an actual value of $2,794. But you know, by going through this before, you're not going to have to pay that today. You're not even going to have to pay $100. We've made the course $97. Okay, so the course is $97. But what we've done is since you're on this page, we've given you till Sunday to where you can get it for just $67. Plus, if you're one of the first 10 buyers, what we're going to do is we're going to give you exclusive um entrance into our top club group which i say is like a penny stock because we're the home of the seven day challenges so you work out with me for seven days on different challenges we've done a weight loss challenge which we had lots of people go through and get um you know uh, great results they really love doing it we're about to go through a consistency challenge for seven days so i'm actually going to go through the first seven days of this course with you i'm going to do it live you're going to get access to where it's you know you get into your membership it's not live there but I'm going to go live every day and actually do the work with you for a seven-day challenge. Plus, we're going to be doing, you know, as time goes on, we're doing every challenge you can think of in the book. And so that's why I say it's like an Apple stock because the value is going to keep going up and up and up, okay? So if you are ready to get started, take action. Plus, just one more thing. If you would like to try all my courses for $1, you can click this. I want to be completely transparent what this is about. You get 14 days to try it. After that, it's $47 a month. You can cancel any time, but you get all our courses that you read here if you click this. So take advantage of that too. Um, I see that is kind of a no-brainer just to click that for $1. Then it'll become $68. If you don't click that, no big deal, uh, but you don't get access to all the courses. Once you fill this out, once you fill this out, what you do is you get access to the consistency course and solo shots, okay? But you don't get access to all the other courses. Hopefully that is clear to you. Once you fill this out, you get access to your training and um, you get immediate access. And 
If you have any trouble, you can always email me at crunchtimecoaching at gmail and we'll make sure you get in. Okay, we want you to get in. We work really, really hard on this stuff. So, of course, we want you to get in. You can also call me. You can call me, guys. You guys are like family once you're in. It's 770-990-8034. So, we'll see you inside the training. And thanks so much for watching this video.